Hi everyone, I am making this video to share with you what I plan on doing for cycle one, week one. But before I get started on all the ideas for the new grammar in the classroom, I wanted to let you know how I was gonna incorporate these in my home too. See, last year was our first year in CC, so all of this singing and dancing and moving around was so new that we kind of left that just a community day. So I'm super excited to be so much more comfortable with the material and the format to have kind of incorporate them at home and just to keep that, I guess you'd say, party going at home. So, because Cece has just been so wonderful and enriching to our lives. So take these ideas. This is not just for tutors. It's not just for the classroom and you don't have to use them all, but bring that phone home um, to, to your children. So. Um, before I get started though, here's some tips for tutors on classroom management. Sit your students down, whether they're in chairs or on the floor, and let them know what you expect of them. Now, depending on the age, you can be creative based on what they can understand. But for our classroom, they use the letter P, and our tutor had the children participate. And what are all the words that you can think of that start with the letter P that would help provide a great classroom environment. So some of the words were like being polite, being patient, and being positive, and participating. So this was um, a great theme, a great day way to start your day, but then also she started every day with prayer. And I encourage you to do, the, to do that as well, whether that you're the one that leads in prayer or if you want the students to lead as well. But then, then get that day going right after that and jump in to new grammar. Um, I will post a picture of my board. I have the schedule written down for myself as the tutor so I can keep track of what time we're going to art, what time we're gonna do presentations and science and review and things like that. Um, having that visual in front of me is gonna help me keep on track. And also, depending on the age of your students, now our students weren't small, but we put on um, our schedule a bathroom break before we went to science, um, depending on when your science um, time is, that might be a perfect time if you're moving classrooms to send a parent with the boys, go to the bathroom, send a parent with the girls to go to the bathroom. That way you don't have your students coming in and out of your classroom and then missing parts of the new grammar or other activities that you're working on. So write that schedule down, keep it in your brain, what time you want everyone to take a break. Um, so I will, show you what I'm doing for my new grammar. I've got my board over here, so that's what I'm looking at. So for the children I have, um, they're all age four, so things are gonna be on their level. So we're gonna start out with timeline, and I'm gonna have the cards and be able to give them that visual of showing them the cards. Then we are gonna go through the hand motions. We're gonna use the hand motions that are provided from CC so that everyone can follow along. Now, if you're a tutor and you log into that video and it's the entire video and she's moving very fast. Please know that if you log back in and scroll down a little bit further, the timeline hand, hand motions are broken down per week and she goes much slower so that you can really see what she's doing. So timeline, we're gonna do that with the hand motions, get them up and moving on their feet and then we're gonna move on to math because of their age, we're not gonna do the entire equation. We are going to just skip count. So um, let me grab my notes here. Um, what I've done is, um, to be a good example to our parents, is I am writing very lightly with pencil <laughs> in my book, which is really hard to do, right? Okay, so, but what I've done for myself is a reminder, because we want to go through each item about seven times, right? So made these small little notes to myself, but for math, we're gonna sing it, uh, excuse me, we're gonna start with saying it, sing it, and then we're gonna put some motion with it. So for our skip counting, we are going to um, skip count and we can put some movement like jumping or jumping jacks, um, and then we can move on to just the boys um, saying it and just the girls and so on, and then wrap it up with everybody doing it twice. I think going through visually and writing it down will help me keep on track so that we're hitting it seven times. Okay, so next up, we're gonna move on to history and 
We are going to keep it um, stick in the sand and we are going to go with the song that CC has provided. I feel pretty passionately about that because CC has provided it and our, our parents probably have access to it. And if they have students in other classes and I decide to do a different song, it's going to be hard for the whole family to sing it together. So um, I'm a little undecided on hand motions at this point for the commandments, but um, because of their age, but maybe we'll work with just um, numbers or, you know, commandment one and two and so on. But, um, and if I find that they're catching on as we are singing it, I will erase a word and I will try to um, pause and see if they say the word in class. Okay, so moving on after history, we're going to move to science. And for science, I really love having a song for science. It really gets in my head, and I know I'm constantly singing songs around my house, which helps my children learn. So the song for the classification of living things I found was on CC Connected. And I see, I was having a hard time remembering it because we've added domain to the list. And my brain was just really having a hard time remembering the order after I put domain at the top. So there's a really fun song to the tune from The Lion King, I Just Can't Wait to Be King, and it's so fun. So it's domain kingdom, phylum class, order family, genus species. These are the classifications of living things. So I love that. It sounds super fun, and I, I picture myself singing it all the time and my kids catching on. Okay, moving on, we're gonna go to English and on YouTube, um, I don't know if it's on CC Connected, but on YouTube, um, the song is sung to the tune of La Cucaracha. And again, it's a, just a really catchy song. And not only does it go through the definition of a preposition, but it also adds um, a few of the actual preposition words. I don't know if there's a song in its entirety. Um, I have a plan for uh, preposition words later, but that's always fun for it to be a song that goes from more than just one week. So look for that on YouTube, and I wanted to give you a little advice. When you go onto YouTube, if you plan on using your phone in the classroom to help keep that tune in your head, because sometimes we get so busy or our nerves um, come into play and we can't think of how this song goes, having your phone and being able to just press play, not just play it over and over for the classroom, but just to get that beat for you, maybe play it once or twice, but you can also create a playlist so that you're not trying to just search for it. So, so go through that, get yourself a playlist, and, and then also review back through and how to pull up that playlist because Nothing like stumbling around in the classroom when, when you're like, oh, I got to stay on task. So, okay, moving on. Latin. Latin, we're just going to do chanting. We're just going to repeat it till it gets in our brains and split up the classroom. So, um, as you're doing nominative, subject, genitive, possessive, split your, split your class. Have yourself on one side and a parent on the other so that your, your parent can help lead the opposite side. Um, that's what I have. For, for Latin. And then for geography, um, I wanted to make it really fun and interactive. And I'll show you what I've got. Um, because, uh, let's see, three out of our five items are, um, these are golden grams, but three of our five items on geography are rivers. So these are little golden grams. And to me, it looks like a little primitive raft. I'm going to print out a picture of a primitive raft so the children actually have a visual of what I'm talking about. But the time period that we're really focused on is the ancient times. And I thought that would be really fun for them to not only show me and tell me, but they could move their raft up and down the river and to those other places that are not rivers that are right adjacent to rivers. So that's what I'm doing. I hope you guys have a lot of wonderful plans and use some of these things in your home. That was something that we just didn't do and I just want to have a lot more fun this year at my house. And ladies, I just want to close that we, um, as homeschooling moms and, and if we're tutoring and volunteering, that we're constantly pouring out. I really just in, encourage you to take care of yourselves. And if this has been a long time since you've taken some time for yourself, 
um, man, you can just start with going to the grocery store by yourself. It's going to feel like a vacation the first time. But um, if you're beyond that and, and you really have just forgotten about your hobbies and the things that you love, I just encourage you, even if you just take a few moments to work on something that you love or just spend some time being quiet, reading a book, um, it's the beginning of the year. We're filled with ideas and enthusiasm, but, but don't get burned out. Fill your cup up and just take care of yourself and just have a wonderful year. Thanks, guys.